Well, hello, good evening. And uh, my name is Dr. Alberto, and uh, we are sharing this webinar from pre-health um, uh, facilities. Uh, my name is Dr. Alberto. I serve as medical director right here at Advanced Biomedicine, home of Free Health and Boston Sus Clinic. Today's, um, today's lecture, today's webinar is going to be about uh, the new perspectives of the approaches currently being taken to treat orthopedic conditions using cell therapy. So, uh, without further ado, let's start. What are going to be the objectives of uh, today's, today's webinar? The objective is to share a little bit of uh, who we are, uh, a very basic uh, definition of stem cells and this, of what is a, 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 a stem cell, uh, some of the sources of the stem cells, what are the, the, legal, the legally authorized to use sources, how stem cells work, especially because there are different um, perspectives, there are different definitions, there are different uh, uh, concepts on how, how, how uh, stem cells work. And uh, we would like to take this opportunity to, to actually straight uh, this information. Uh, what is the actual therapeutic potential of using the sensible stem cells in, in, in orthopedic applications? And of course, we want to wrap it up uh, discussing and sharing with you some of the potential improvements and, 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 uh, and the, the term or, or the long, mid, mid and long term of this, these improvements. So um, before anything, I'd like to touch or to mention what is regenerative medicine. Uh, basically, regenerative medicine is a, a new-ish a branch of translational medicine. Uh, basically, it's a, a, a part of research that involves some form of clinical use, uh, uh, either of tissue engineering uh, or in combination with molecular biology, as well as the use of cell-based products or cell-derived products with the main intention to help dealing with the process of replacing or regenerating some form of human tissues. Uh, I want to mention with this that regenerative medicine is not only aesthetics. Regenerative medicine is not only turning the clock back. Regenerative medicine is not making uh, our patients feel young or just energized. That's, that's, not, that's like a side effect, if you want to say it that way. The main objective of regenerative medicine, or the goal of it, it's, it's to, to, to help our patient to restore or establish or accomplish a, a, a normal function or, or a new normal function, depending on, on, on what we are helping our patients to achieve. Uh, once again, in this, this, this lecture is going to be, we're going to be mentioning about orthopedic applications. Now, who we are? As I said at the beginning, we are Advanced Biomedicine. Advanced Biomedicine is the owner of Rehealth Regenerative Therapies, uh, which is it's in charge of uh, facilitating therapies for adult patients. And our sister clinic, it's uh, Warstem Cells Clinic, which is in charge of uh, treating um, pediatric patients. So uh, why is the reason why we are based here in Mexico? Why is the reason why uh, the, the, the nature of, of medical tourism. And I, I like to state and to mention and to clarify that it's not because it's cheaper, because it's legal or illegal or anything like that. It's basically because of FDA regulations. Currently, the, the, the FDA guidelines prevent the actual use of, of any cell-based or cell-derived therapy in the way we use it, the way we, we provide it to our patients. And in this, in this, this type of manufacture, this type of approaches cannot be performed in the United States or in Canada in a legal way. So uh, what I want to express with this is that our group, the, 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 our af affiliates, uh, perform most of the research in the US. We have a laboratory based in California. However, the legal and compliant therapeutic center where, where the actual uh, treatments take place. It's based here in Cancun, here in Mexico, and it's it, the, the, those, those treatments are provided by, by us right here in Rehealth. So, with that being said, 
I want to share with you what is our mission, what is the, the, the main reason why uh, we, we are treating our patients with this type of technology. Yes, it's a, a medical branch. Yes, it's, it's medicine. Yes, it's science. And the main objective is to apply the current experience that has been gathered through investigation, through research, using cell-based therapies as a scientific, as well as a legal viable alternative to treat different conditions. Once again, today we're going to mention our ortho applications, but overall, as in Rachel, we treat patients with autoimmune conditions, we treat patients with neurodegenerative conditions, we treat patients with respiratory conditions, and in Warsensus Clinic, we treat pediatric patients who are within autism spectrum, as well as diagnosed with cerebral palsy. So that is the main reason, that is the mission that we have. It's treating, helping our patients to achieve a better quality of life uh, through this new technology. Now, uh, I'd like to mention or to share about our processes, the certificates, and at least one of our affiliations. Now, about our processes, we are not only a clinic that shares and provides a stem cell treatment and that's it. We are also a bone marrow bank. We are also, we, we, we are currently and constantly developing mesenchymal stem cells that are from umbilical cord tissue. We have our own proprietary method to harvest them and bank them. We also have a regenerative medicine license. This is a, a key factor in, at least here in Mexico, for any clinic to be able to provide, again, keyword, legally, a, a cell-based therapy or a cell-derived therapy uh, that it's compliant with the government and that is compliant with the authorization and the local regulations. Now, I want to mention here, as, as, as you can see, that it says CGTP, CGMP, ISCT regulations. Basically, this means good tissue practice, good manufacturer practice, and also following the regulations of the International uh, Society of Cell Therapy. In other words, this basically takes care of us following the necessary procedures, the necessary protocols regarding quality control, manufacture, regulation, and monitorization of the products and the, the, the manipulation of any cell that I product in our laboratory. At the same time, about the facilities, as you can see in the picture, this is an actual picture of our laboratory. The laboratory is, is built under ISO 7 clean room standards. So perhaps for some, it's a little bit overkill, it's way too much just to manipulate, let's say, bone marrow stem cells. However, it conveys for our patients peace of mind at the same time as it allow, allow us to expand into different areas such as dendritic cell therapy, natural killer th uh, therapy, as well as exosome uh, cell therapy and harvesting. Finally, about our affiliations. We have an affiliation and we are, we are working, cooperating with RISTEM. RISTEM is a company that is currently providing stem cells uh, for a recently approved, FDA approved treatment protocol for patients who are in, in ICU uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic right now. This clinical study is taking place as we speak uh, in South Dakota as well as Miami. So uh, I, I just want you to picture, to take, to take a moment and, and realize, okay, we are right in the middle of a pandemic. If currently FDA has actually approved a protocol to treat critical patients with this technology, with this type of therapy. And uh, so far, at least seven to 10 patients have been um, saved or have been discharged out of the hospital using stem cells alone. Just imagine what those stem cells can do in a non-critical patient, such as in orthopedic applications. Now, let's change the subject a little bit. I like to discuss a, a very basic ground rules or, or, or a very basic description of what is a stem cell. Uh, the nature of me explaining this is not just to provide a, a, a definition, just to comply with a, a, a presentation. I want you to, to realize, to open a little bit your eyes in, in order for everyone to understand that there is one problem with the stem cells and that is that lots of people, lots of companies, lots of scammers, lots of, of, of uh, let's say, 
There is a lot of quackery as well. You can even find on eBay and, and, and some other uh, online stores that they are selling stem cells in bottles, in vials, in different presentations. And it turns out that those are not even stem cells. In fact, those are not even a biological product. So my point is the, the, the word or the term stem cell is currently and dangerously being used in the wrong way and very loosely. So what is an actual stem cell? What is the definition of a stem cell? I remember a few moments ago about this, the, the, the processes that we had to follow in order to comply with good tissue practice, good, good, good manufacturing practice, as well as the International Society of Cell Therapy. According to them, a natural stem cell, and the sentinel stem cell, it's a cell that has to be plastic adherent. Basically, when you have the stem cells in the cult under culture condition where they're lying in the dish, the cells have to stick to the plastic. Another one, the stem cells should, it's a must, the, uh, express at least these markers, CD105, CD73, and CD90. How can you realize that these stem cells have these markers? There is a process known as flow cytometry in which the cells are put in this machine and the results are going to show which markers are being expressed by the cells. If the so-called cells that they are selling you or providing you do not express these markers, they are simply not stem cells. Now, uh, on the other hand, there are some markers that should be absent in order for them to be stem cells as well. As you can see in the image, we have CD45, CD34 narrative, CD14, et cetera, et cetera. However, one of the most important ones are the HLA-DR surface molecules, basically are immune-related molecules. Now, when we're talking about mesenchymal stem cells, for this particular application, I like to state and to mention beforehand that they are going to help heal and even repair, depending on the damage, depending, depending on the condition, and depending on the, on the case that uh, uh, the clinic is evaluating. They are going to help with muscle, bone, cartilage, and tendons. I am mentioning this four because today's lesson or today's uh, uh, presentation is about orthopedic applications. However, per definition, stem cell, mesenchymal stem cell have over differentiation properties such as blood and, and um, collagen, and uh, another one is uh, shown like cells. So, uh, however, for this purpose, we're going to focus on this one. Now, what are the sources of stem cells? Right now, with the current investigation, it's been found that you can even uh, collect or harvest stem cells from the olfactory bulb. You can harvest stem cells from adipose tissue, which is one of the most famous. It's, it's been a while that, that, that people have been studying this ones. Bone marrow uh, from dermal tissue, also known as industrially potent stem cells, in which you, you, you collect a graft from, from, the, from the skin. From magnetic fluid, from the periosteum, uh, endometrial cells currently being studied from, from menstrual blood, uh, placenta, core blood, even from peripheral blood, dental tissue, muscle. As sources, pretty much 70% of our body, it's, it's very rich in a possible stem cell source. What is the difficulty? One, these sources, not all of them are authorized for, for current human application or, or, or treatment. Two, it's not easy to harvest the stem cells from any of these, of, of, of these tissues. Some places sell or manage or control or provide cell-based therapies using some form of kits in order to make things a little bit more expedite and also to kind of fall in a gray area by the FDA. However, once again, if they do not comply with the definition that I just expressed about the market expression and, and uh, adhere to plastic, those are not stem cells. I'm not saying that they don't work. I'm not saying that it's a scam. I am just saying that per definition, those are not stem cells. They can be tagged, and that is the reason why they fall in some form of gray area for the FDA. Uh, they can be tagged as cell-based product. Now, let's focus on what can actually be used and administered uh, for, for human applications. And I'm talking about the actual sources and types of stem cells that we can handle here in our clinic. 
we can separate them in two, in two types. One is autologous. This means that the cells are coming from the patient's own body, from a sample of the patient's body. And the other one is allogenic or donor stem cells, in which, in our case, we received a donation from, umbil from a umbilical cord tissue. And uh, following our patent, we harvested the stem cells uh, uh, and, and we bank them and we preserve them right here in the clinic. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages. However, when we focus on autologous stem cells, we must say that the ones that we currently handle in here are bone marrow derived. So yes, we, we can and we have used adipose tissue. However, in, in our experience, harvesting bone marrow, harvesting hematopoietic derived stem cells from the bone marrow of our patients is a lot easier following our method. Same thing for harvesting or collecting the stem cells from that, from, from, from that tissue. Advantages, they cannot be rejected by the patient because you cannot be allergic to yourself. It's, a, it's your own tissue, so there is no problem whatsoever on receiving, regarding the safety and receiving the, 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 the therapy. Another plus, there, there is a, a niche of patients that say, I don't want to receive cells from a donor, I want to use my own, can we bank them? Sure we can. As I said at the beginning, we have a bone marrow bank, so whenever we have a patient that says, I want to use my, my cells, can we bank them? We can store them here, we can expand them, we can preserve them, and we can derive them to mesenchymal stem cells in order to, for them to be used in the future for X amount of therapies. And this is something that is a common question, maybe not 100% needed in the ortho application. However, it's a, a, a common concern. What if I use my stem cells, but I am sick, I have some sort of history of genetic condition or something like that, and I use my own stem cells. That is not a problem. Actually using your own stem cells, being a patient being sick, for example, that doesn't mean that the condition is going to be overexpressed or is going to worsen. It doesn't happen because we are not using the genetic code. What we are using is immune modulation. We're using the markers, remember that. Now, when we discuss about allogenic cells, as I said, those are already prepped. Those are already uh, uh, set in our laboratory. The stem cells will be limited in number. They will be limited by the weight of the patient. Obviously, it's not going to be the same. The needs of a male patient with the body of a football linebacker, for example, versus a CrossFit lady who is, let's say, 120 pounds versus a 320 pound guy. So the, the, the needs of every patient is going to be different. So therefore we have to personalize the attention based on the needs of the patient. And also one tiny difference, however, it's worth to mention, are the difference between the markers in, in one to another, the number of, the percentage of market expression of them. Now, uh, those are the ones that we handle here. However, I have to say that those are the common ones that are currently authorized for human application. Remember the previous slide, there is a lot of different sources. However, not all of them are authorized for human applications. Moving forward to how do stem cells work? This, there is a, a, a different conceptions about, uh, about this, the actual mechanism of action. Uh, the most common one is in the past, we had the concept that the stem cells fly or, or, or uh, fly. The stem cells uh, flow in, in, in our blood and then they home the, because they follow different signals and then they home in a place and they attach in this place in order for the stem cells to transform in tissue and fix everything and everything is going to be happy. That is not entirely true, it's partially true. So uh, nowadays with the research that has been taking place, because this is a never ending topic, this is a never ending field. Uh, now we know that the mechanism of action is a little bit different. Sure, the main goal is for the cells to sit in one place and try to, to repair the area. However, it's not the way we used to think it is. Now, what's the actual mechanism of action? Let's, let's set two different scenarios. The, the, the utopic scenario, the, the perfect scenario, the healthy scenario is under normal conditions, our current production of stem cells is going to be taking care of very basic functions, which is aside of keeping us alive, regulate our blood pressure, and pretty much taking care of homeostasis. Homeostasis by homeostasis, I mean 
the harmonics of our body that balance a, a non-toxic environment for our system to perform in the optimum way. However, I haven't met anyone who comes here for treatment or to any doctor, regardless of the specialty, because they are happy or because they are just healthy. Uh, when we have a patient here, it's because they are complaining about something. Doesn't matter how, how big or small the situation is, which leads me to the second scenario, which is any scenario in which the tissue or the cell is under stress. So when we have this homeostasis that I was mentioning a few moments ago, when this balance, when this harmony is broken, your immune system is going to rush promptly in order to take care of the situation because your immune system is going to respond to the microenvironment where this stress is taking place. So it's going to act when we talk about uh, the, the orthopedic applications, is going to act in a localized way and respond according to the specific action of the tissue. What I mean is you have a problem, let's say in your knee, there is going to be an accident, injury, uh, you just hurt yourself playing football or something like that, and immediately there's going to be inflammation. You are having inflammation in one articulation, you are not having inflammation in your chest. So what is going to take place is going to be in a localized way according to the aggression of the environment that should be balanced. And right now, due to that accident, is not balanced. That is how it's taking place, uh, the, the mechanism of action of a stem cell, any type of a stem cell. How is this taking place? Because they are going to act through a immune system or immune modulation response. Let's let's uh, see it or let's understand it this way. Imagine that there is a, some sort of manifestation. There is a bunch of guys uh, are creating some form of riot. And then somebody says, we have to release the SWAT guys. We have to release the elite force. And then a bunch of cells are going to respond to that toxic situation, to that toxic environment. So what is going to happen is that in the presence of this hostile event, in the presence of this uh, uh, level of toxicity, the main objective for this group of cells, for, for this SWAT team that is surrounding the situation, is to preserve the form and the function and the activity of the remaining cells. How is this going to take place? Immune system modulation. That is it. Remember a few moments ago I was saying about that everybody thought that the stem cells were migrating and just uh, patching and fixing and making everything happy. That's why I'm saying that it's partially true. Now we know that the way they work, it's by modulating in a localized way the response of these hostile events. Now, one of the, the, the another advantages being stem cells per definition, they are not going to express some, a major histocompatibility complex. Therefore, they cannot be rejected and they are going to inhibit T cell expansion on, on lymphocyte reactions. In other words, they are going to work as a anti-inflammatory uh, uh, cells by immune system modulation or mediation. Here we have it as a tiny cartoon response. What we are seeing here is that we have the good guys versus the bad guys. There is nobody going into your body. There is no trauma. There is no accident that is going into your body for free. There is always going to be a war, whether if it's from a virus, from a bacteria, from a, a, a traumatic event, or just by degeneration because of wear and tear. There is always going to be some form of war. What is the main objective? This one, reestablishing the microenvironment of this area that is under hostile events. How? By the release of, of these trophic effects, the, by, by modulating the immune system, and as a bonus, because this is just an extra property of the stem cells, uh, a, a, some form of antimicrobial or antiseptic form of the stem cells. Once again, the main idea is to reestablish the microenvironment of the area in order to preserve the form and the function. Remember the definition of regenerative medicine. Always the main goal is going to be to search or to look for a new normal, to achieve some form of normality in terms of functionality. Now, Going a little bit ahead of therapeutic activities of, of the mesenchymal stem cells, what are actually the therapeutic actions of the cell as, 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 a, as, a living, as a living entity? As I said a few moments ago, they are going to modulate either locally and or systemically 
the immune system. As I said, they are going to initiate or uh, 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 the release of, of a group of cells in order to stop or control either an autoimmune response that is leading to some form of pro-inflammatory uh, uh, situation. In other words, there is a trauma in, again, in the knee and the hip, the cells are going to surround this area and the, the result is going to be the reduction of these pro-inflammatory markers. As mentioned a few, a few seconds ago, they have an antimicrobial protection and they can help restore the, the, the immune system, the, the, the immune system homeostasis. The fact that there is one knee, one hip, one hand, one shoulder injury doesn't mean that the rest of the body is healthy. There is a still inflammatory markers being expressed in the body. Now, uh, molecularly speaking, the cells are going to release something known as trophic factors. And these trophic factors are going to, to, to lead or to cause something known as trophic, uh, trophic effects. And these effects are going to be prevent scar tissue formation. We, uh, we have to make, to make very, very clear this one. It's not the same thing prevent scar tissue than eliminating scar tissue. If there is a scar tissue already in place, that is not going to be going away. That is, that, that is, that is going to be there forever, right? Unless it's manually eliminated. However, if there is an injury, such as in, in the lungs, such as uh, osteoporosis, uh, uh, such as maybe a skin injury or something similar, if there is blood flow, there can be possibilities for repair, right? It's just to prevent scar tissue formation. Another uh, factor of the, trophy, uh, of the trophic effect, another uh, activity of the trophic effects is prevent apoptosis. Apoptosis is the programmed cell death. However, when you have this hostile environment, it's possible to trigger apoptosis or, or a premature apoptosis, meaning that this tissue, this area, this articulation is going to struggle because there is not going to be optimal performance from the cells that should be working in there because they are not protected. Once again, go back to the image of the, of the SWAT guys protecting the rest of the cells. The idea is to prevent the, the, the cells that are living in there. Now, one huge advantage that can be very well uh, uh, promoted and needed in orthopedic application is blood flow. Angiogenesis stimulation or, or blood vessel formation needs 100% needed when it comes to muscle and articulations because every single tissue needs glucose, every single tissue needs oxygen, and therefore every single tissue needs blood in order for that tissue to be living. And once again, and I cannot emphasize it enough, the anti-inflammatory effect because the less inflammation means better performance in that niche of cells. Now, where can we use the stem cells? Well, I think that if, when it comes to orthopedic application, it's going to be easier to mention where it cannot, where, uh, where the stem cells cannot be used. Uh, why is this? Pretty much every single articulation can, can be injected, can be uh, benefit from, from, from the use of stem cells. Just not to mention them all, pretty much as I said, every single articulation, therapeutic areas, sport related injuries, this is something, let's, let's define sport injuries. By sport injuries, everybody thinks that we have a, a very well-built athlete that likes to play any form of a sport because they live out of it or they are a triathlon or something like that and they cannot run or use a bike or, or swim or something like that because they injure themselves. Per definition, that's a sport injury. However, we also have to take in consideration another niche of patients, which is 40, 50, 60, 70 year old patients that somehow practicing their hobby, doing their own regular activities, going to play sports or something like that, they just had an accident. And maybe we have a 60 year old lady, sweet lady that cannot do her gardening, or maybe we have a 70 year old guy that is retired and he wants to, to, to make the best out of his now extra time playing golf, but now he can't because the hip is bothering because uh, the back is bothering because the shoulder is bothering. Also, there is another niche of patients that are currently being visited, visiting the orthopedicians, and this is fibromyalgia patients. This is 
quite complicated to treat in a medical, in a normal medical way or a typical uh, way, because pain is random. There is not an actual uh, ethiopathology known or, or pinpointed when it comes to fibromyalgia. Currently, there are studies pointing that fibromyalgia is triggered by some form of autoimmune condition. However, uh, some regular painkillers are not taking care of the situation. However, we've seen that stem cells can help our patients in order to perform better. Another area, arthritis, any form of arthritis. Here in Mexico, we call it osteoarthrosis. In the US and in Canada, they, they call it osteoarthritis. Um, even rheumatoid arthritis can, can be potentially receive benefits from the use of stem cells, as well as osteoporosis. Regarding osteoporosis, there are a lot of studies pointing that stem cells can help to increase bone density as long as hormonal imbalances and hormonal changes are taken care of. Now, common complaints as patients. Now, this is just a, 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 a simple image, a simple illustration of a knee, of, of, of an affected knee. However, my point is what I want to, to convey with this one is usually one articulation or two articulations at a time are going to be the trigger reason why a patient is going to visit their doctor asking for some advice. However, the main complaints are going to be, I cannot move. Uh, I can barely uh, raise my hand or my arm. Uh, I, have, I have some pain when I comb my hair. Um, I cannot move, com cannot move completely. It cracks, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, upon evaluation of that specialist, they can identify that there is ligament problems, tendon problems, muscle problems, or the most common one, which are arthritic changes, whether if it's towards degeneration because of excessive wear and tear or because of bad posture, overweight, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the common complaints, and those are the areas in which a patient can be greatly benefited with the use of a stem cell. But I like to go deeper or to dig deeper into what is the actual therapeutic objective with this type of patients. I like to say that the way we've seen it with the experience that we have achieved right here in the clinic and seeing it in a more, more human way and or, or less medical way, if you want to say that, that, that in, in that manner, uh, we want to offer, as we said at the beginning of, 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 this, of this presentation, we want to offer a valid scientific and legal alternative. We want to break the traditional medical circle of therapy. We want to help our patients to preserve, to prevent. We want to help the patient. If we couldn't prevent, let's preserve the form and the function of the articulation of your activity, of your life, in order for that patient to perform and to go back to maybe not to the activities that they were performing 34 or 40 years ago, but to perform activities in order for them to feel happy. This, this circle that you're seeing here, these, these red spots uh, are intending to describe the common approach for let's say a hip or a knee problem in which there is always the beginning of pain, chronic pain, acute pain, regardless of the situation. Everybody starts with some form of anti oral anti-inflammatories uh, the pain does not go away, so the conservative approach is going to change the type of anti-inflammatories or the painkillers. In the meantime, scheduling some form of x-rays. and uh, uh, Based on the results of the x-rays, considering some form of corticosteroid injection or, or, or prednisone or something similar, it may improve because prednisone helps to bring down inflammation, but it's just a patch. It's just symptom control, but not fixing the situation. Now we have that well, now we have to run an MRI in order for us to know what's the situation of that articulation so we can uh, uh, choose between going through an arthroscopic approach or a surgical approach. Once again, the therapeutic objective of using stem cells is to break this circle. Where, if you, if you ask me, I would like to, to break it here, right here, maybe. When there is some form of acute or chronic pain, could be something that happened due to an accident, it could be something that has been bothering you for the past five or 10 years, and you're just controlling it with just very basic, I don't know, let's say naproxen or, or Tylenol or something like that. 
the ideal situation will be to stop the situation right here. That way you can push away the rest of the circle. However, that's for me. We would love to stop the situation maybe right here before corticosteroid injections in the articulations because we don't want a patch. We are aiming for a natural fix of the actual situation. So uh, I, I want you to understand as well that this is fantastic as a preventive uh, method. If we are already here, that's fine. Stem cells can actually be very helpful and we will see it a little bit later. Uh, uh, however, the main concept of using this, once again, breaking the circle because we don't want to reach this point. We don't want to reach uh, surgery. We don't want to reach any form of arthroscopy. Disclaimer, I am not saying that surgery is bad. No, I'm not saying that. In some cases, surgery is the exit. In some cases, arthroscopy or, or, the, or, or some form of uh, mechanical approach, a surgical approach is needed or is even prescribed. However, if we can prevent, we can actually take away or not consider a surgical approach as a variable. Why? Because it can be done. Now, about approaches of the stem cells. If you remember a few moments ago, we were talking about the valid and authorized cell therapies that we can use for our patients, whether if it's allogenic or donor cells or using the, 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 the autologous of the same patient stem cells. If you can see, there are similarities. When we're talking about the donor cells, we are mentioning that the cells are, are ready. There is no need for harvesting or anything like that. When our patient is here, the cells are ready for treatment. Uh, the administration requires a little bit of local anesthesia depending on the size of application. As I said, and this is very important, the proprietary stem cell harvesting method, because if we want to comply with the definition of actual real purified mesenchymal stem cell, we have to, to certify them and show that to our patient that if they comply with the definition of the International Society of Cell Therapy. And in our case, with the results that we've seen, our protocol states that we have to perform two different approaches in, 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 in our patients. One is intravenous infusion of the stem cells, traditional IV infusion, and the second, the intra-articular as well as periarticular, depending on the, on the evaluation of our um, uh, specialist, of the stem cells. Same thing when it comes to the autologous stem cells. When we are uh, talking about the bone marrow aspiration, this just changes a little bit because the bone marrow takes place when our patient is sleeping. That way the patient uh, does not have to care or the, they don't have to worry about pain, discomfort or anything like that because the bone marrow aspiration takes place in about 10 minutes or less. Now, once we have that sample in our hands, the, 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 the bone marrow is taken here to our laboratory in order for it to be processed. And uh, same thing, the approaches, the approaches based on our experience, based on our protocols has to be two different approaches. IV intravenous infusion of the cells of the stem cells as well as the intra-articular infusion of the cells. In other words, we can inject and we have to inject the cells where the main problem or the main complication, the main complaint is, as well as we have to do it systemically or intravenous. Remember, localized reaction because some form of, of articulation is under stress, but at the same time, we have in the systemically, we have the expression of different markers in our body that are also causing inflammatory, systemic inflammation in the rest of the body. Remember, definition of regenerative medicine, the main objective, reestablish of the microenvironment. If we have a good systemic environment, it's going to be a lot easier for your body to repair in a localized way. Why? Because the environment is not toxic or is less toxic. Now, moving forward to potential improvements. I'm mentioning here potential improvements because obviously changes can be or improvements can be different depending on the patient, the severity of, of, of the condition, the type of condition and the number of articulations the chronicity of the, of, of the situation. However, the common ones are related to joint inflammation. 
I'm saying the common ones as well as the quickest uh, to, to be expressed. One, reduction of pain. Second, reduction of swelling. Third, reduction of stiffness. If we, or not we, if the stem cells can help our patients to bring down two out of three or three out of three, that will transfer or that will convey into some form of freedom and the patient is going to feel slightly more active. The fact that the patient is feeling better does not mean that the patient can do whatever they want. Remember, we are helping our patients to repair and to achieve some form of normality, but that doesn't mean that they can do whatever they want. They need to go through some form of exercises or a stimulation or uh, let's say physical therapy in order for that patient to start gaining back strength, posture, and uh, preserve form and the function. That's the main goal, remember that. <clears throat> now, when it comes to uh, the, the, remember, systemic uh, 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 infusion of the stem cells or IV infusion of the stem cells, all with the main objective of anti-inflammatory effects, not only localized, but uh, systemic uh, uh, anti-inflammation effects. Improved therapeutic response. This is very subjective or generalized because we are talking about, depending on what the patient needs prior or even after treatment, is going to be a lot easier for that patient to go through that therapeutic response. Example, we have a rugby player that just injured a shoulder and maybe one knee. I understand that that, that player, maybe because it's his lifestyle, maybe because uh, he, he, it's his job, uh, they had to go back in the game, like, like we're about to see in a moment. And, uh, however, it's not like receiving stem cells and that's it. No. When there is a, 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 any form of a sport injury or articular injury, we need some form of physical therapy. We need to train. We need to improve the strength of the muscles. We need to improve the strength of the area. That is what I mean with improved therapeutic response. The response to that physical training, to that uh, physical therapy is going to be a lot easier, a lot quicker, especially when we're talking about 40, 45, 50 years of age. Instead of going 12 weeks to 12 weeks to, to physical therapy, maybe we can short it to six to seven weeks, right? Uh, I'm a very huge fan of, 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 of uh, car racing and motorcycle racing. Currently, last week, if I'm not mistaken, one of motorcycle racers broke the arm he is back in the business for this weekend with a broken arm. So it can be done. It can, the, 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 the response, the therapeutic response can actually improve. Another common improvement, and I like to mention this as a desired side effect, is some form of anti-aging response or anti-aging improvement. It's not the same when you are 55 than when you are 25. When you're 25, you can run 10 miles when you are and recover like nothing happened. When you are 55, you can still run 10 miles, but you are going to need a little bit of time to catch your breath. What I mean with anti-aging is that your body can repair, can recover, can increase metabolism, can develop muscle mass a lot easier, a lot quicker, because your immune system is in the best shape possible based on the age of the patient. Once again, it's just a matter to define what is the goal of, the, of, of, of every patient and not just reducing pain and swelling and inflammation. Once again, the main objective is going back in the game, re, re, uh, offering back to that patient, to that lady to, to, to go back to gardening, to that sir to going back golfing, to that player to go back doing their sports. There's lots of people that, has, uh, that, that have outdoor hobbies if you kill the hobby of somebody who loves wakeboarding, snowboarding, motorcycle racing, car racing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's people who has grown out, uh, uh, outdoors. If you kill that, you are pretty much uh, sentencing that patient to some form of depression, and that's not fair. If there is an option, if there is an alternative for that patient, maybe not to do it professionally, maybe not to to to, to make money out of it but at least to sustain hobby, to sustain happiness, to sustain productivity, to sustain uh, uh, the, the, the lifestyle of that patient, why not? Now, let's mention about actual potential results that have been uh, traced or evaluated and documented. We have two uh, different scales 
uh, they can be labeled as subjective, however they are standardized as scales, because if it's not standard, it cannot be valid as a epidemiological study, as well as a um, valid uh, research study. So we have the WOMAC, which is the Western Ontario and Macassi University Index, which is a, a questionnaire that evaluates pain discomfort and, and degeneration uh, acuteness as well as chronicity of some form of osteoarthritis, osteoarthrosis condition or orthopedic application. And then we have the visual analog scale, which is pretty much a subjective, uh, also a standardized scale to analyze pain. Within the, what these results are showing is that within the first month and a half, maybe two months, the patients in each one of these scales they are improving between 30 to maybe 40%. And we're talking between from one month to, to, to the second month. Now, what about long-term improvements? Using the same scale, same patients, the patients have been mentioning or expressing or, or, or enjoying the improvements uh, for up to one year and in even better or greater uh, um, scales reaching between 40 to 45 percent just in one year. Uh, once again, if you combine the therapy with some form of physical therapy, proper stimulation, maybe a healthy diet, healthy, healthy lifestyle, I am pretty sure that you can make this 40 percent into a 50, a 55, or a 60. Uh, so going back to the first definition, reaching new normal, improving form and the function. And this is something that can be achieved. This is something that is free for you to, to, to search in the, in, the, in the literature. Now, another example, some say that a, a picture, it's, it's worth a thousand words. This is only using stem cells with a slight combination of PRP, platelet-rich uh, plasma. That's something that we perform here every day with the patients that are coming for orthopedic application. This is an example of a tear in one of the rotator cuffs, six months. That's it. With, uh, for someone who likes golfing, for someone who likes playing tennis, I think that this is a huge improvement because it provides functionality. This is for, 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 from Dr. Crescenteno et al. Uh, showing some of the results in terms of applying mesenchymal stem cells in the knee. What the studies are showing, significant cartilage and meniscal repair. Once again, no surgery involved. This is only using stem cells. The better the cartilage, the better the meniscus, the better the articulation. Remember, that is going to increase the motion, the range of motion. Better performance means decreased pain. Remember the VAS scale, which is a scale for, for measuring pain and discomfort. The scale is decreasing. The numbers are decreasing in mid to long term in this type of patients. Once again, why not? Finally, this is a... a an extra that I didn't include in, the, in, in, in early stages because it's not 100% orthopedic application. However, it's a, a niche of patients that are currently visiting orthopedic doctors, uh, orthopedic surgeons, as well as endocrinologists, because we are talking about some form of ischemia in, in, in the limbs, uh, something that is quite common in patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, pretty much, or in other words, this means that there is not enough blood flow in, 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 in the limb completely. So as you can see on the left image of both images, the, 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 the left one is a, an angiography of a, of a limb in which the blood is not flowing constantly or adequately. The right image is the same limb after hematopoietic stem cell application. Now, if you ask me, this can be very helpful for those patients who have type 2 diabetes, not to have one leg or one articulate or, or one limb cut, to not, not to have one, one leg amputated, to preserve once again form and function. To, it's, it's very common uh, for type 2 diabetic patients to be afraid of clipping their nails, to be afraid of, of, of scrubbing, to be afraid of using shoes, to be afraid, et cetera, et cetera. As long as the patients are on their correct and proper care regarding the diabetic, the glucose numbers, et cetera, et cetera, as long as they are taking, having a healthy lifestyle, this is very achievable.
And uh, finally, questions. If there is a question, please let me know. Feel free to write in an email right here to, to dro at advancedbiomedicine.com. I'd like to, to wrap this up uh, with, with one cheesy yet useful phrase that I learned from one of our patients. I said goodbye to the pain and said hello to the game. And this is from a patient, an actual 75 year old guy who is now back playing golf. Why? Because he retired and quoting him, he deserves it. So if he had the chance, I'm using his own words, is cheaper than having a surgery. So if there is any question, let me know. We can answer some questions if there is any right here. At the same time, uh, feel free to drop a message to my personal email address. You can visit our, our uh, web page. We are here to help. So I have a question right here that says, what is the actual dosage of a stem cells that can be used and how many times the treatment can be done? The treatment can be done more than once, sure, that we recommend it, of course. However, the frequency of the treatment can be performed between every six months to a year, depending on, on the progress of the patient, as well as the severity of the patient. Regarding the dosage, we are currently, based on our experience, we are currently using between 10 to 15 million mesenchymal stem cells per articulation when we are talking about large articulations such as the hip as well as the shoulders, for example, maybe the knees, and about seven to 10 average is seven million stem cells for smaller articulations like a, a, an elbow, for example. Regarding IV infusion of the stem cells, we are handling numbers between 140 to 180 million stem cells on patients who are between 65, 70 to maybe 95 kilos of, of, of weight. If we have patients who are taller, wider, or heavier, we have to adjust the dosage. And once again, regarding the frequency of the treatment, uh, that's, that is the, 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 the recommendation is at least every eight months, maybe 10 months to a year. However, we have patients that do this every year to year and a half with really, really good results like the ones shown in, in, in the previous slides. Now, there is another one that says, I have it here, which stem cells are recommended for this, for ortho or for this type of treatments? The, the, the bone marrow ones or adipose tissue ones or the umbilical cord? On our side, this is a question that has to be evaluated depending on the needs of the patient. Why is this? It's not the same treating something like this than treating something like this, than treating something like this. So uh, my point is, depending on what the patient, on, on the patient's goal, depending on the patient's age, as well as depending on the patient's current health condition, is that we are going to differentiate and identify which, which cell therapy can be the most suitable for our patients. For example, if we are talking about ischemia, uh, uh, we will lean towards bone marrow derived stem cells. If we are talking about actual orthopedic application, we will lean towards uh, uh, intraarticular application. We will lean towards the mesenchymal stem cells from the umbilical cord. Uh, when it comes to IV infusion of the stem cells, if we are talking about adults, we are going to lean uh, towards the umbilical cord tissue. Once again, every single patient has very different needs and that is something that we like to address through a video conference prior to the treatment, obviously, because we're not making a patient coming all the way from the US or from Canada to have a treatment just to, to identify what is going to happen. This is something that is addressed for free prior to the treatment based on addressing the patient's needs as an individual. There is not a perfect recipe, a general perfect recipe. It's, we are talking about personalized medicine and this is medicine that has to be uh, addressed or, or provided or designed based on the needs of every patient. Mm. Apparently, that's it. 
and uh, well i like to say thank you so much for your time thank you so much for taking the moment to listen to us thank you so much to for actually taking the liberty to sending a message asking questions again information is for free if there is any any situation that we can help you with let us know we are here to help we should have an excellent day an excellent weekend and uh, if there is something there is a particular topic that you would like us to talk about regarding the stem cell application let us know have an excellent day